How are we doing State Youth Games? That's better. That's better. Hey, uh, Matt, come back here. Can we, uh, can we give Matt a massive round of applause for putting my table out, the water down? Well, you guys may not know, Matt and I are like best mates. Yeah, he's a good guy. And uh, I'm about to tell a really embarrassing story about him. And he has to be my slave for the weekend. So things are good for me and it's a bit rough for Matt. So give Matt another massive round of applause. Thanks, Matt. For being a great guy. So yeah, we're going to tell an embarrassing story about Matt. It's the great thing about having embarrassing friends, hey? You can tell their stories instead of your own. So uh, Matt was living with myself and another friend of ours called Nathan. And uh, Matt had this weird thing where he would consistently tell Nathan and I that he was an amazing chef. You know, he'd be one of those guys like, I'm the next Jamie Oliver. In fact, no, I'm not. I'm Jamie Oliver reborn. You know, it's like, Matt, Jamie Oliver's still alive. I don't know quite how that works, but he was going for it. He's like, I'm Jamie Oliver. I'm the best. And you want to know why he thought he was so good? No? Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you anyway. He thought he was so good because he would sprinkle herbs on his steak while it was cooking. That was literally it. Just had to be like, look at me, I'm so amazing. Do you know the worst part is? He was using Master Foods five herbs. That was it. Didn't even have his own herbs. He was just using someone else's herbs. I mean like, look at me, I'm amazing. I'm the best chef ever. Just sprinkling some herbs on his steak. Anyway, as good friends do, we said to Matt, we said, hey, if you really want us to think you're Jamie Oliver, you need to go to the next level. You need to grow your own herbs and use them on your food. That's what we think Jamie Oliver would do. So we're teasing Matt and pushing him and he's doing nothing about it. And I think it was partly because he was unsure of his ability to actually grow herbs. You know, Ballarat is a tough environment uh, to grow herbs in. On my wedding day, it was 41 degrees. The next day, it was 17. Like, that's a tough environment to grow herbs in. So Matt wasn't really doing anything. We kept teasing him every time. He'd be like, look at me with my herbs. We're like, all right, whatever, Matt. Buy some herbs, then we'll listen. And then one day, Matt goes out to Bunnings. Now, he loves Bunnings. And he comes home, and he's super excited. He's like, boys, boys, guess what I bought at Bunnings? Now, at the time, Matt had a Lancer that he absolutely loved until he wrote it off. So we kind of figured that uh, he'd bought something for his Lancer, like, you know, a 30-centimeter, I don't know, what, what are they called? Like the things that go on the back of the... Um, Car, spoiler, yeah, that thing. We're like, he's probably bought a massive spoiler. I don't know if you can buy it from Bunnings, but it seems like you can buy everything from Bunnings. But instead, he goes, nah, it's not anything to do with my car. Check this out. Similar response from Nathan and I, because he had it backwards and all we could see was the barcode. It was like, we got no idea what you're so excited about, Matt, but it looks like a cup. And it was a cup. He's like, yeah, it is a cup, but it's called a cup for chilies or a chili cup. We're like, okay, we don't get it. He's like, imagine brownies in a cup, but chilies. We're like, all right, what, do you put it in the microwave? He was like, no. We was like, okay, explain it to us. He's like, it's so cool. It comes with a cup, and then it comes with some dirt, and then it comes with some chili seeds. Yeah, that's it. That's the whole thing. That was what he was so excited about. But he's like, I'm so excited because I'm going to grow my own chilies. Yeah, I know. We were also super excited because we didn't think it was going to happen. We were like, yeah, whatever, Matt. This is definitely not going to work for you. We know Matt. We know how he works. But he was super excited. So Matt became super dedicated. He instantly opened the cup. He opened up the dirt. He poured the dirt in the cup. He measured exactly how far in the seeds needed to go. Then he put the seeds exactly to that point. He then realized how much water he needed. So he got his eye drops out. He realized, all right, I need three drops of water. Perfect. Then in Ballarat, he did the maths on how much sunlight the plant was going to get. Okay, Ballarat, three hours of sunlight today. Says the chili plant needs one and a half hours of sunlight every day. Which corner of the house am I going to put it in to make sure it gets the appropriate levels of sunlight? Matt was super dedicated. He was like, I am going to absolutely crush this chili plant. So the first two or three weeks, uh, he's working really hard. He's you know, putting the water in every day. He's making sure it's getting the right amount of sunlight. And then you won't believe what happens. Some green shoots start to come out of the dirt. Yeah, yeah, Matt, yeah. I know, so good. Yeah, Matt. It was the worst for us. 
Can you imagine how like cocky he was? Oh yeah, look at me, I'm growing my own chilies. Look at me, like I'm about to be the next Jamie Oliver. You guys are gonna wish you had my chilies. I'll have them, but you can't use them. You know, he's like doing all this sort of stuff. Like, whatever, Matt. The thing was, the green shoots don't grow that fast. So like they only grew a little bit at a time. And Matt got a little bit bored. And Matt, he can sometimes get a little bit lazy. And so for a couple of weeks, he didn't look after his chilies at all. Now, you guys already know what's going to happen here, don't you? Because you can't just not look after your chilies. And so slowly but surely, these green shoots turned brown and began to die right before our very eyes. Now, we would be good friends and tease Matt mercilessly about this. Hey, Matt, can I have a taste of your dead chilies? Oh, hey, Matt, can I put some of your dead chilies on my steak tonight? Hey, Matt. How are the dead chilies going? Hey, Matt, it's a nice morning today. Too bad your chilies are dead. You know, just like <laughs> consistently. Matt, your chilies are dead. Matt, your chilies are dead. Matt, what hope have you got in life if you can't even look after chilies? You know, like, what are you going to do with yourself? I don't know. Tell me about it. Good friends, hey? Everyone wants to be friends with me and Nathan now. But really, what happened was Matt got super excited about this idea. You know, last night we talked about how we can create momentum by acting on our inspiration. Matt acted on his inspiration. He's like, I want to grow some herbs, and I'm going to grow some chilies, and he did something about it. And we all get a little bit excited about these things, and Matt got excited, and he put his time in, and he put his energy in, and then it got slow. Things stopped. Didn't grow quite as quick. He got a little bit bored, and slowly but surely, the momentum that he had was beginning to be lost. And we see that because the chilies die. Now, well, we can look at Matt and go, mate, what are you doing? The truth is all of us do it at some point in our lives. You might be here tonight and, you know, you went through a bit of a fitness phase at the start of the year, you know, new year, new me, you know, new biceps, new triceps, going for that whole look. And you were going to the gym for a whole month and you're like, holy moly, these things are huge. No, and really they weren't, but you thought they were. And then you're like, whoa, these things are huge. And you were so excited and you felt super swole. And now it's winter and you've got your winter belly on and that's the only thing that's swole. You know, like that might be your reality right now. Maybe for some of you, you're thinking about your schooling and you're going, you know what? Yeah, actually, I was killing it at the start of the year. I'm not very good at maths, but I got a couple of really great marks to kick things off. And you think about it now and you're like, I haven't opened my maths textbook in who knows how long. You know, all of us have this experience where we will create some momentum but then hit this patch where we feel like it starts to get a little bit hard. And we're left with the question of how do I keep this momentum going? How do we? How do we keep this momentum going? And tonight we're going to see, we're going to look at the book of Matthew. There's a story in there. It's actually throughout the Bible a couple of times. We're going to look at this story of Jesus walking on water. And what it shows is about how we can keep momentum going in our lives. But in particular, we're going to look at it from the perspective of Peter. Now, Peter's this guy that I absolutely love in the Bible because I look at Peter and I go, that's me, an idiot who gets to spend time with Jesus. You know, like, that's awesome. Well done, Peter. But Peter in this story is on a boat with his friends, also sometimes known as the collective, the disciples. And uh, they're hanging out on a boat in the middle of the Sea of, I think it's Sea of Galilee, and there is a massive storm. Massive storm. Now, like, I'm not talking about a Victorian storm. I'm talking like a Queensland storm. Like, I thought the storms here in Victoria were, you know, pretty good, especially when it hails real heavy. Uh, but in Queensland, man, their storms are legit. It's like legit lightning, thunder, hail, rain coming in sideways, tropical winds, trees getting blown over, cars getting flipped, flooding everywhere, like a legit storm. My wife and I were so nervous about how bad their storms were that we're renting a fifth floor apartment just to make sure that we don't experience any flooding at all, okay? So like, that's how bad their storms are. And this is what the disciples are experiencing on the sea. So they're going, we are about to sink. We're about to die. The boat's going to capsize. We can't swim. This is all going to end terribly. And guess what they see while they're out there? A ghost-like figure just walking on the water. Now, imagine you're there. How terrifying would that be? It's like, all right, great. I thought we were going to get thrown over the boat, potentially drowned. 
Now we might get killed by a ghost. And I don't know what ghosts do to kill me, but it sounds terrible and I'm terrified. So these guys were absolutely scared. They thought their life was over no matter what. The weirdest thing happens next. This ghost-like figure is walking towards them. Again, they're probably getting increasingly terrified as it gets closer. And then they hear it say this. Hey, it's me, Jesus. I mean... What? Like, wouldn't you be a little bit confused? If that was you in the situation with your friends and I was walking to you on the water, I was like, hey guys, it's me, Ben, from State Youth Games. You'd be like, no, it's not. No, it's not. It just can't be. So, like, these guys would be super confused. And I love that Peter is trying to figure out, is it really Jesus? And do you know what he says? He says, if it's you, Jesus, tell me to walk on the water. Like, have you ever thought about how dumb that thing is? What a suggestion. What if this is a bad ghost and he thinks, well, that'll be funny. Yeah, do it. But more importantly, if it's Jesus and Peter, you're friends with him, surely you could just ask him, hey, Jesus, what's my birthday? Jesus, what's my last name? Jesus, what's my mother's surname? You know those questions that you need to reset your password? Just ask one of them, Peter, and I'm sure if Jesus knows you well enough, he'll know the answer and that can clear things up. But no, Peter was like, tell me to walk on the water crazy. One of those moments where if you really thought about it, if a friend was saying that, you'd be like, hey, let's just settle down. Settle down. You're going too hard, too fast. Let's learn to swim first and then we'll worry about walking on water, all right? Like, let's get that down before we worry about this. But Peter is like, no, I'm going to do this. And what we miss sometimes when we look at this story by itself is we think it looks crazy. But for Peter, he's been spending all of this time with Jesus And he knows who Jesus is. And he knows what Jesus has done. I mean, Peter has seen Jesus heal sick people. Peter has seen Jesus get a person who couldn't walk, walking again. Peter has seen Jesus heal someone by spitting in their eyes. Ridiculous stuff. So Peter just goes, this just sounds like Jesus doing crazy things again, you know, walking on water. And why couldn't I do it too? And so then Jesus calls out to Peter and says, yeah, come on, walk on water. Come out to me. Now, Peter gets out of the boat and stands on the water. I don't know about you, but I feel like that would be enough for me. Like, oh, Wow. Holy moly, I'm standing on the top of the ocean. Let me get a quick photo of this, put on my Instagram so everyone can see I'm the guy who walked on water. You know, like, that would be enough for me. But Peter has experienced this monumental moment, this moment where momentum has been created in his life. Wow, I walked on water. I'm the only human being to have ever done that. You know, like, outside of Jesus, that's me and Jesus, something we have in common. We can go to heaven and have the walking on water club. We're the only two people in it. You know, like, that's a pretty sweet setup. But Peter decides, not only am I going to stand on it, but I am going to start walking to Jesus. And so Peter literally steps and steps and steps and steps, and he walks towards Jesus. And he keeps the momentum going. Now, eventually, Peter kind of sinks a little bit, and we're going to look at that tomorrow night about what happens when that happens to us. But in this moment, we see something really, really simple and really, really important for us to understand. See, Peter gets momentum, and he keeps it going by taking the next step. See, last night we learned about how we create momentum by putting some action on our inspiration. But tonight, we see that we keep momentum by just taking the next step. Just as simple as taking the next step. Now, is there anyone in this room who is like me and married? Hands in the air if you're in this room and you're married. Yeah? A few of you, good, nice. All right, hands in the air if you would like to be married. Yeah, a few more hands in the air, nice. I see some down the back, yeah. A few of you people pretty keen. Come on, get me married. Hands in the air if you're scared of getting married. Like it kind of freaks you out a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. That's good, good honesty. I'm standing up here on stage a self-confessed person who was terrified of getting married. 
terrified of it. I really liked the idea of spending my whole life with someone. And then I had the moment where I realized that poor person had to spend their whole life with me. You know, you ever have that moment where you're like, oh, I get a really good deal and they get a really terrible deal. That like sucks for them. And luckily for me, after all of my anxiety and all of my worrying, thinking no one is going to take that chance on me, I found my incredible, wonderful wife, Rachel. She is amazing. And I was like, whew, lucky I got her. And you should all be thanking her because she took a bullet for you guys because otherwise someone else was going to have to do it. And it, you know, like, thankfully she took it for you. So Rachel's a champion. She's amazing. And um, yeah, you should be clapping her. She's over the back here. Shout out to the missus. But seriously, marriage scared me. Really, really scared me. And the first time I ever met Rachel, man, we were in the car park of Hungry Jack's. And um, just the candlelight dinner, just in the car, no, not really. We were in the car park of Hungry Jack's and at the time I was there skating with some of my friends. I know, cool, skating with my friends in the car park of Hungry Jack's. But I had this friend, you probably all have one, and if you don't have one, you're it. But uh, we had this friend, he would go and talk to people who were strangers. Now, that's okay, I guess, but he would talk to them for like 20 minutes. And you could see that after 30 seconds, they were keen to leave. But unfortunately, he wouldn't let them, you know? A constant barrage of questions, regular invitations to come to his place for dinner, even though they've just met, all of that sort of weird stuff. So anyway, I noticed that he'd been gone for 15 minutes. And I saw this group of people over there with him and I thought, the poor people. They're so close to their car, so close to hope. <laughs> and yet he just won't let them go. So I thought, you know what, I better go save them, being the, the hero that I am. And so I skated on over to them, saw Corey, and luckily he knew these people and he introduced me to them. And one of them was uh, the lovely Rachel. And as soon as I saw her, I looked in her eyes and I was like, she's the one. I grabbed her hand as I shook it. Didn't quite go there, but uh, did get down on one knee. I said, Rachel, I've only just met you, but will you marry me? No, I didn't do that. What are you guys? <laughs> I know you don't know me, but I'm not insane. Like, can you imagine what she would have said? No, and then like blocked me. We didn't even have each other's phone numbers and somehow she still would have blocked me. That's how weird it would have been. I didn't do that because that's not what you do. Like big things like that, you're not just like jumping into them like, oh yes, I'm gonna get married, you know, like tomorrow the reception, you know, like all that sort of stuff. That didn't happen. All that happened was I got her name. Then a couple of weeks later, I got her phone number. Nice. And then a couple of weeks later after that, we started hanging, um, hanging out, <laughs> hanging out. Then a couple of months after that, we started dating. I know, yeah, I know, I know, took it slow. A couple of months after that, we said, I love you, and I know, that was a pretty big deal. And then a couple of years after that, we got engaged. And then a couple of months after that, we got married. Yeah, woo! Marriage is the best. Get married, it's great. But what you can see in all of this is all we did was take it one step at a time. The idea of marriage was overwhelming, it was a big deal. But all I had to do was get her name, get her number, the next step, start hanging out, the next step, start dating, the next step, say I love you, the next step, get engaged, the next step, and then get married. And by the time you get engaged, marriage is just the next step. And so Peter would consistently take the next step in following after Jesus. He just thought, this is what Jesus does, I'm going to take the next step and follow him. If you want to get married, you just take it one step at a time. But you keep taking these steps to keep momentum going. And what we actually see is that Jesus himself followed this same principle. See, we see in the beginning that, you know, Jesus created the heavens and the earth. He created all of human history. That's a pretty serious act that creates a whole lot of momentum. But then everything goes awry. We see that, you know, Adam and Eve sin and it all falls short and you don't really have a concept of sin or what that looks like. You've experienced it. 
The impact has meant that it's broken our relationship with God, our relationship with ourself, with others, and with creation. And we see the effects of it anytime we see injustice, war, poverty, or maybe you feel it in your own life when you experience you know, shame, guilt, hurt, trauma. These things are the after effects of that, the moments when things don't go right. And Jesus saw that. And he realized that there was something that he needed to do, that there was a step that needed to be taken to bring some momentum back to our relationship with him and to keep that momentum going forward. And so what Jesus did is that Jesus stepped down from heaven to earth and he walked among us. And Jesus continued to take steps while he was there. You know, we see Jesus heal people. We see Jesus talk about what it looks like to follow him. We see Jesus talk about what it looks like to, put, uh, to have a life that puts God first in it. We see Jesus talk about these things so that there would be something for us to know what the next step would be. But then Jesus steps in to our place. See, Jesus went to the cross and he died a death that he didn't deserve. Jesus lived a sinless, blameless life. He did everything right. He did everything by the book. He didn't deserve death. But he died for us. He stepped into our place and died a death that we deserved. And he took all the punishment. He took all the penalty and he paid it for us. But it didn't just end there. See, Jesus then stepped over death. See, as Christians, we believe that after three days, Jesus rose again. And that this, uh, this rising was what proves that he is God, but also proves that he has the power to bring momentum and keep momentum happening into our lives. To see us be people who experience the fullness of life that God wants to, us to have. To see us be people who understand the immense value and worth that each of us have. To be people who experience the freedom that is available to us. To see, experience healing and wholeness from some of the pain and the hurt that has happened in our lives. Jesus died and rose again so that all of these things would be available to us. But these were all just the next step for him. He stepped down from heaven to earth, he stepped into our place on the cross, and then he stepped over death so all of these things would be available to each and every single one of us. See, for Jesus to keep momentum going in our relationship with him, he had to take the next step, and he did. So we see this time and time again. And you know, interestingly, Matt eventually threw out his dead chilies. I know, sad. But guess what? He decided that the next step for him was to get a new lot of chilies in a cup. Yeah. And this time, Matt knew what he had to do. And so he started again. He put the dirt in the cup. He measured the, you know, the depth of the seeds needed to go in. He started watering with his eye drop thing again. He got the protractor out, made sure all the angles were all right. And he stuck at it time and time again. He kept taking the next step. This time when the green shoots came up, he knew that he needed to stick at it for another month at least. And so he did. And in this time, between him planting this new lot of chilies, I left and moved to Brisbane. No, sad times. But what was awesome was Matt kept at it. And then one day, after a few weeks of Matt not texting me back, I don't know, come on, Matt, get back to me, man. All I was asking was how you're doing. I get this message. It says, Matt Donaldson, one image. So, mm, this is weird. Matt tends to send some weird selfies. So I was like, I don't know what's going to happen here. Opened it, and it was the photo of a chili, a fully grown chili. And under it said, I did it. I'm the new Jamie Oliver. <laughs> yeah. Matt, everybody. It's your moment, man. But it's just this time, Matt kept taking the next step. And the truth is for all of us, when we experience that moment where we feel like we're starting to slow down, feel like momentum's starting to come to a halt, just take the next step. If you want momentum to keep happening in your life, take the next step. And I can guarantee that you here right now know there's areas in your life, there's things in your life where you go, I know what I need to do. I know the next step that I need to take. So take it. 
Whether for some of you it's in your faith, you go, you know what, like I feel like things are good, I've been reading my Bible semi-regularly three to four times a week, but you know that you need to read it more regularly. You just want to go, oh, that's the next step I need to take. Maybe for some of you, you're here and you're going, I don't even really know about faith, Jesus, all of this God stuff. Maybe the next step for you is to just ask the question, is God real? And what would it be like if he was? What would that mean for me? You know, maybe for some of you, the question about this is you have a next step that you know you need to take around friendship. You've got a friend who's just on the fringes of your group, who you know you struggle to connect with and you often miss out. And you know what? The next step for me is to just be a better friend to them. Because I want to be a better friend. I just need to do that for them. Maybe for some of you, it's just around your schooling. You go, you know what? I do need to take that next step. I just need to get back into my study routine. I need to do that because I have some big plans that are going to come out of this. Maybe for some of you, it's even things in your finances or it's things in your family, but there's things that you know you need to do. There's a next step that you know you need to take. And when you take it, you will keep momentum going in your life. And you never know where it'll end up. One step at a time, I ended up getting married. One step at a time, who knows where you're going to end up. Because I believe if we all here decide to take the next step in whatever it is that we need to do, we'll begin to see more momentum, we'll begin to keep momentum going in our lives. And I fully believe big things are going to come out of the people in this room. If you are willing to continue to take the next step. I think that what we're going to see is there's going to be preachers who are going to be preaching at State Youth Games in a number of years' time because they decided this weekend to take the next step in their faith, that there's going to be people who all of a sudden start programs and initiatives because they took the next step in their finances and they're able to be generous enough to help those in need. I fully believe that there are going to be people in this room who are going to be the next lawyers, the next doctors, the next politicians, the next people who are going to work on our earth's conservation, people who are going to be influential people because they decided to take the next step in their schooling. And I believe that we can see our communities and our nation changed if we are people who collectively take the next step. You never know where your next step is going to take you, but I know that with God it can be monumental. It can make a profound difference in the lives of so many people. That's what's possible if we take the next step. See, Jesus has already done all of that for us. He's done whatever it took for us to continue to move forward. The question is for us, are we going to be people who continue to take the next step? There's always a next step available to us. The question is, will we take it? And tonight, I recognize that there's potentially three groups in this room, people that I want to invite you to take a next step in. I know that there might be people in this room who have been doing the journey what faith looks like, about asking questions about Jesus and about what it looks like to follow Him. And tonight, you know, the next step for you is to say, yeah, I, I want to follow Jesus. I want to take each step after Him. I want to follow Him. If that's you here tonight. You know that that's the next step that you need to take. And in a moment, I'm going to ask you to stand if that's you. There's probably another group of you here tonight. You're like, you know what? The next step I need to make is I've been pretty serious about my faith. I've been following Jesus. And I, I really want to do that for the rest of my life. And your next step is to publicly declare that and say, you know what, I, I want to get baptized when I go home. I want to do that. I want to make that public declaration that I'm going to get baptized, that I want to follow Jesus for the rest of my days. That might be the next step for you here tonight. But I recognize that there's another group here tonight and you might be here and you go, you know what, yeah, my, my faith's been important, but the last six months... I've been kind of doing my own thing. I've probably been going off a, a different track. I've been taking that next step of following Jesus. And you recognize that for you tonight, the next step for you isn't necessarily a step forward down that path, but a step back to where you came from, a step back to Jesus and who he is and what he wants for you. And I recognize that you are. There's probably people here who you go, yep, I need to follow Jesus. Yep, I want to make that decision to get baptized. And yep, I need to come back to him. And what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm just going to ask you in a moment to just stand where you are. 
Now, there's nothing super special about this standing. All this is is just saying, you know what, I identify with that. One of these three areas is something that I need to address. It's something that I know I want to talk about. It's something I know I want to do the journey on. And when you stand, what we're going to do is hopefully the people around you are either friends or your leaders or your group coordinators. And what we're going to do is once you've stood, we're going to get them to gather around you and we're just going to pray together for you. That's all we're going to do when you stand. There's nothing super special or super scary or super weird about it. You're just going to stand and say, yep, that's me. I identify with that. That's something that I want to do. And then we're going to pray for you. And it's the best. You can stand here because everyone here is for you. Everyone here cares about you. Everyone here wants the best for you. So this is a judgment-free zone. This is just a place for us to say, you know what? I identify with that. And I want to do the journey on that. I want to follow Jesus. I want to get baptized. I want to go back. I want to go back to Jesus. And so if that's you here tonight, I would love for you to just stand where you are right now take this next step to say, that's me. So if that's you, just stand. Just stand where you are. Be bold. Yeah, that's great. Good work. Awesome. Stand where you are. Give these guys a clap as they stand. This is awesome. Seriously, just stand. If that's you, just stand where you are. Take that next step and just stand. Say, that's me. I want to have that conversation. I want to do that. This is awesome. It's great. Hey, I want to encourage you, if you're sitting there right now and you're thinking, you know what, oh, I think I need to do this, but I'm not really sure if I'm going to, just stand when you want. Just seriously, just stand whenever you want. Like, we're going to pray for you guys and we're going to support you. And just go for it. Don't miss out on this opportunity. And just step out. Take that next step that's before you right now and just stand where you are. Cool. Great. Good work, guys. Proud of you. It's a big thing to stand up and say, hey, that's me. It's a good on you for taking that next step. Hey, what we're going to do right now is if there are people around you, um, whether you know them or not, I'd love for you to pray for them. But if there's some people that you go, hey, that's one of my kids, I'd love to pray for them. Hey, that's one of my friends, I'd love to pray for them. Feel free to quickly move around and gather around them. Let's do that now. Stand up, gather around these people and pray for them. Whether you know them or not, let's just like lay a hand on them, maybe gather in a little circle and just be praying together. We're just going to gather together and then I'm going to pray over you guys and you can continue those conversations after. That's great. All right, make sure everyone's got someone praying for him. If you can see anyone standing by themselves, get around him, pray for him. It's important that everyone has someone standing with them in this. It's awesome. Hey, just check with them what they want prayer for and feel free to start praying and I'm just going to start praying over everyone in a second. So check what they want prayer for and start praying for them. But hey, let's pray together. Lord, we just want to thank you, Jesus, for the fact that you were willing to take the next step for us. And when everything was out of order in our lives, Lord, that you were willing to take the step to come out from, from heaven to earth, to take the step to go to the cross for us and to take the step over death. Lord, and we want to thank you that all of that was so that you could be in relationship with us, so that we could continue to move forward with a sense of momentum and purpose in our life. Lord, I pray that you would help each and every single one of these incredible people who has just stood up to say, yep, that's me. I want to take the next step, Lord. I pray that you would be with them, Lord. I pray that you would give them courage. I pray that they would know your love. Lord, I pray that you would put great people around them who will help them and support them and answer their questions and encourage them on the journey. But Lord, we just pray right now that you would be with each and every single one of them. Lord, we thank you for their bravery and their courage to stand up in front of this group of people. But Lord, we thank you that this is a safe place for them to do that. Lord, we just pray right now that you would help all of us, whether we're standing or sitting, be people who take the next step. Lord, may we never underestimate what you can do in our lives by just taking the next step. And so, Lord, we thank you for all of these people, Lord. May you continue to bless them and love them. We pray all of this in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen.